If you clicked on this video, you're probably on a Kodak Gold 200 medium format YouTube binge, and I'm here to keep that train moving and grooving. If this is your first time here, my name is Brandon Gorey. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And for everyone else, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about Kodak Gold 200 medium format and give you insight on its performance in studio with our phenomenal model Aaron from Wallflower Modeling Agency based out of Dallas, Texas. Now I'm going to have all the necessary links to the Instagrams and websites in the description below so don't worry about that. We shot a total of four rolls of Kodak Gold. We shot the first one at box speed. We shot the second two, pushing it one stop to 400. And then we shot the last roll at 800, testing, really testing the lateral of the film itself. I usually make videos based on general photography of miscellaneous things, but the bulk of my real life content is focused around portrait and model photography. So I wanted to start incorporating more videos into my YouTube channel that are centered around shooting models on film and digital. And obviously today we've got film, so um, I wanted to start doing that because that's where my passion is. So metal. Yeah, no. We started at 9.45 a.m. and that's when we were gonna do our makeup and styling. And for this one, the idea of the shoot was so simple that I didn't outsource for makeup this time, I usually do. Instead, I resorted to doing the makeup myself. So first and foremost for the hair stuff, we got this Chi Chai thing, helmet head, hold level five hairspray. Elf eye blender for eyeshadow. Got a smaller elf brush for application of said eyeshadow. And then we've got, well, it's the elf matte eyeshadow nude mood collection, cheap, whatever. But it's fine because it's matte and it's dark and we only need a little bit of it to complete the shoot. We decided on three looks and then headed to the studio for 11 a.m. Upon arriving, we began to set up the charcoal backdrop for our moody sweater look. Now, I called this shoot Paved because it was pulled from ideas based on the 90s main stage British big beat movement. Now, if you don't know what that is, just think The Prodigy. That's a that's one of the main, that's one of the cornerstone bands of that whole era. As well as that, this shoot was inspired by the moody British 80s goth rock. So, you know, The Cure, The Smiths, Sonic Youth, Human League, Simple Minds, you name it. You know, that sort of sound, that sort of aesthetic is ubiquitous among our generation. And so oddly enough, it was kind of funny, when I sent this shoot itinerary, when I sent the proposal to Aaron, he came back immediately and he goes, you know what, this reminds me of Jill Sanders shoot with Craig McDean and uh, <laughs> he was pretty accurate. So we began our shoot with a quick roll of HP 5 400 pushed to 1600 to kind of grease the gears with Aaron a bit because frankly this is my first time I'd shot with him and I wasn't sure how things were going to go. Um, but Aaron proved quite quickly that uh, there was no real need to warm up. <laughs>
Now it's time to crack open the Kodak Gold 200. And so the first roll, of course, we shot at box speed at 200, and that gave us a shutter speed of around 1 15th to 1 30th, which I wasn't too upset about. I wasn't too, you know, I didn't mind it too much because of course the theme of the shoot was to be a little bit perturbed and in disarray. So we were gonna accept any blurry casualties that we would incur from this ISO choice. We pressed onward to capture the rest of look one with the second roll of Kodak Gold, pushing it to 400 speed so that we could kind of dredge ourselves out of the 115th and 130th shutter speed. The next look I was really into because it was the look that was closest to the concept of the shoot in its infancy. So I brought some chaos into Aaron's mane to satisfy the cravings and to satiate the urges of disorder and disarray that constantly haunt me day and night. shots of look number two we decided to get some motion blur because why not We moved on to the third look and Aaron brought his hair into a stiff upper lip ordained by none other than the Victorian era English Parliament. It was at this stage that we pushed our Kodak Gold to 800 ISO. Ha <laughs> ha 
honey. Get me the Del to 100. We're pushing it to 800. My dear constituents, we will shoot Kodak Gold 800 in the air, in the streets. I have every right to push Kodak Gold to 800. Big Kodak Gold guy. You merely adopted the 800. I was born in it, molded by it. I didn't see the light until I was already in the dark room. <laughs> in terms of shooting 800, I loved the results. I loved how the film handled this specific instance. I think if I think if I was going for this look again or something along these lines with this high contrast, um, I would definitely push Kodak Gold to 800. But um, in, in terms of like anything else, like would I go out into the street or would I shoot, you know, uh, natural light this way? Probably not. 23 inches of cheesy delight going straight into his heart and his food hole. And other than that orifice, there's something else to be had afterwards, but that remains to be seen. I really want to thank my longtime friend Mick Primer for shooting the entire process here that you've been able to look at and watch. Um, he's a longtime friend of mine, sticking it out in LA as an actor, and I could not have done this video without him. Thank you guys for making it this far in the video. I'm really stoked to be able to show you the prima modus of what I do in my daily life as a photographer taking film photos. Um, I really hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the content. And of course, bestow upon me your likes, subscriptions, and maybe a comment or two if you have anything to say or any questions. Um, it really helps support me and it really helps me keep putting out these videos for you guys. I'll catch you later.